So prompt engineering basics. I think I'm big on frameworks because it's a little abstract to teach people, you know, what to type into that magical little um, text box, essentially. Because the possibilities are endless, right? Like the question of what can I ask is, is an impossible question because the amount of answers is infinite. So like my first framework would be what makes a good result, right? Because when you start using it, that's kind of that's kind of the main thing you're looking for. You're looking for a good result and good might mean many things already, right? Let's not get into the semantics, but at the very least, if it's useful to you, it's a good result, right? So that's kind of always the end point you're looking for. So now how do we get to that end point, right? If you're just starting out. So I love to break prompts down into two parts, right? No matter how complex the prompt, no matter how complex the problem you're tackling or trying to solve, it always comes down to two things. And Vesemira, I would love to hear if you agree on this because it certainly changes when we get into some advanced use cases. But the core concept that I always teach at the very beginning is think about prompting in terms of instructions plus context. Instructions are super easy to grasp, right? It's kind of the task that you're tackling. It's the thing that you're trying to solve, you know, write me an email, write me this piece of code. And then the context is the second part to, to the magic, to the formula. And that's where it gets, it can get complicated, right? It can be as simple as write me Python code for game XYZ, right? That's kind of the context. You're narrowing down the possibilities by telling it, hey, I'm not looking for C++, I'm looking for Python here. And then you can go super deep with that, right? And that it can also come in like a thousand shades because if you provided a database, if you provided a code base, if you provided access to a GitHub repo, all of that is going to be taken in as the context. And you're all of a sudden going to be talking to this personal assistant that has read the context that you provided to it. And this is like essentially to me, all I like when we talk about teaching prompt engineering, that's what it's all about. It's about defining the context because, because getting the instructions right is super simple. You can get a bunch of templates, ebooks, you can go on Twitter, you'll find a bunch of instructions that are super useful, you know, do this, do that. But the context is where it gets, well, it can get tricky, but that's also where you unlock all the abilities. So yeah, what, what do you make of that base framework, Vesemira? Instructions plus context. Would you like to add anything to that? I, I would just like, you know, go uh, one step further and maybe like think about what one would want this model to, to sort of help with and what is the situation. Um, there are cases where you'd want the model to do something that you already know how to do very well. But you're kind of just like you know lazy to write it down all that bulky code and you want to kind of enhance your productivity and then there's like situations where maybe you're not proficient with that new problem it may be a language it may be like a new library and then you're just like looking for ideas so that you grasp like what the new functionalities are or a new way of solving a problem and then the third use case can be just like browsing documentation, which we know can be very painful um, oftentimes. In the first case, where you're just like trying to, to get the model do what you do, but faster, um, I guess giving the specifications in terms of like the input and the expected output that you, you'd get from um, this code is a good idea. So basically to say like, what are all the input variables? Like, why, why are they here? What is the model gonna use them for? And then you can do, go a little bit further. Like if you're worried about certain like corner cases, then you could specify those corner cases. And uh, that can also be part of the context, right? In that if you are worried about things like security or some other topic or uh, memory overflow, you can put all of this into the context that, you know, the application that I'm building is maybe um, memory sensitive or it has all this other requirement that um, I need to, to specify in the context. Um, and then if you're looking for other things like that you really are not very familiar with, then in that case, maybe you could use the model sort of as a helper to get your, um, your feet into uh, this new topic and have a more interactive session rather than just saying that this is the input, like this is the, the input prompt and this is the output that I'm gonna get out of it. Like you could have to like, form the conversation in a way that you learn a little bit more about the topic first and then you ask follow-up questions about like oh well tell me like what exactly this line will do or are there other ways how to um, sort of form this line or this function a little bit better in a more efficient way um, and so on and so forth. 
Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that often, depending on like the use case and scenario, things may have to tweak a little bit. And um, having a more conversational style on things that you don't know is perhaps um, nicer, and then you get to learn more. And then when, the, when it comes to documentation, um, really, you know, uh, giving a prompt that can explore different types of libraries. This is something that I'm using day to day, actually, uh, for, for many things that maybe I'm not familiar with, just to have a nice comparison between the different libraries uh, over there. Uh, rather than reading the documentation of all of them. And then you can dig deeper into things that maybe you're more interested in. I really like that. I, I think you touched on one point. Um, you mentioned following up while learning about a new topic. I mm -hmm. think that is that is a core concept that a lot of beginners kind of miss. And it's that you don't have to get it right in your first shot, right? Yeah. You can. It's a conversational interface. So you can really start out with you know what you think you're looking for. And then as the con conversation progresses, as long as you respect the con uh, the token window, the context window, you can you can add layers on top of that. And what I always advocate is, you know, if you start with, hey, I'm looking for this and that, and then maybe you add in the examples, like, mm, wait a second, I was actually looking for this type of output, or or like, here's a similar app, like, could you make it more like that? Like, you know, just just even like simple language like that to start off. Um, later on, you can make it more specific, but. I think it's just important to kind of like accept the fact that you don't have to get it right with your first attempt. Matter of fact, you can have hundreds of attempts. There's like the cost to it is virtually zero. So I would encourage people to have an actual conversation. And when you want to, when you know that you're going to be having that conversation multiple times, maybe even daily, as you mentioned in your case, you can start saving some of those um, conversation snippets and you can start combining like multiple prompts or inputs that you had into like one right and the next time you have you face the same problem you can just like copy paste that one larger prompt that original resulted from you maybe going back and forth 10 15 times uh, and that makes it really simple for beginners because sometimes they see these demos and it's like oh here is the, my prompt preset and here's this is what i use daily and then it's like it's these super prompts and and people get scared but the way you arrive at that is just by following your intuition using your social skills because we all know how to talk and communicate right the, the, the fact that we can understand each other right now is proof of that and then just use the social skills and talk to it and then you can piece the different inputs together and arrive at something that you will be reusing regularly and that makes it super easy to to begin 